All right, in this video, we'll talk about named constants. They are another type of memory location that you'll actually be able to use. We'll be covering F3.9 from the textbook, uh, which covers named constants. So a named constant is a memory location with a name that contains a value very much like a variable. However, that value cannot be changed while the application is actually running. The only way you can modify that value is in the code for the application itself. Now, the nice thing about named constants is it actually makes code self-documenting and easier to modify. What I mean by self-documenting and easier to modify is it allows you to replace any um, literal values inside of your code, especially ones that you're using over and over and over again with a named constant that has a descriptive name so people know what that constant is supposed to be. And it means that if you ever have to change the value of that uh, named, uh, of that uh, literal, instead of changing it every single time you've typed it in your application, you can just change it at the definition of the named constant and then it updates for every single time you use the named constant in your code. For example, uh, if we used pi in 10 places in our application, because we're doing like 10 separate calculations that happen to involve pi, uh, it's really easy to mistype 3.14159 and not notice, especially if we're typing it 10 different times throughout our code. And if it's wrong in one place, but right in all the others, it's going to be really hard to find that mistake, especially if it's not the fact that the application is crashing or something like that. But instead that the application is giving us incorrect values. So in this case, using a named constant instead of typing out 3.14159 is really useful because um, then you can just type out, you know, double pi or something like that. You type out double pi every single time. If you spelled it wrong, Visual Basic is going to give you a warning saying, hey, I don't recognize this uh, constant name that you typed in. What's going on? And then you can say, oh, my bad, I mistyped that. Whereas Visual Basic can't give you that warning if you mistype pi because it doesn't really know that you're trying to type in pi or anything like that. Also, if it's in 10 places in your code and you have to modify it, let's say you're trying to add in like 10 more decimal points uh, the next 10 digits of pi or whatever you only have to do that once you don't have to do that to every single time you've put it in your code and it's self-documenting because people know that you're using the number pi it's even more helpful if you're using another random number that's not as recognizable as pi for example if you have a um, interest rate calculation for 10 you know 10 different places in your procedure and you have to just keep on using that interest rate calculation. You know, typing in something like 0 0.05, which is an interesting interest rate, I'm sure. Uh, but typing in 0 0.05 every single time, anyone who's looking at your code, such as myself, if I'm trying to help you, for example, I don't know what that is. I don't know what 0 0.05 is. But if you set a constant like double interest rate, and then type that in every single time, I know exactly what that means. So that's really helpful. So if you're trying to declare a named constant, it's very similar to declaring a variable, except you use the word const instead of dim. Everything else is the same though. So const double pi as double equals 3.14159, const uh, string title as string equals in quotes, vice president of sales, uh, const dec rate as uh, decimal equals 0.05d. Anything like that. It's very much like declaring a variable. You just put const instead of dim. Now you'll notice something about the naming conventions here, and that's that, you know, they are different. Um, you actually do all caps in your constants to show off that they are constants. The IDs stay the same. They're all lowercase. They start with a lowercase letter, but then everything after that is uppercase. And then instead of using, you know, camel case to show 
different words or anything like that, you use an underscore to specify, hey, this is um, like max underscore speed says maximum speed, not like max speed is one word. The underscore separates the two words the way a, sp a uh, space might, but we're not allowed to use a space. So we use underscores instead. But all caps underscores to separate the um, different words that are part of the name, uh, that is how we name our constants. Here's an example of how to uh, actually write out the code for the circle area with actually everything that we've learned so far in this chapter. So we have all of our variables and constants declared. We declare uh, double pi as a constant. Um, that stands for 3.14159. And our variables right here. And then we actually have our use of try parse. Uh, double dot try parse to call the doubles version of try parse. And then we say we're going to put the contents of text radius dot text into uh, double radius after converting it to a number, of course. Uh, and then we uh, calculate double area equals double pi times double radius squared. And then we convert double area to a string and put that inside of the text property of label area. And that is the whole um, procedure. And of course, there's a comment at the very top that says what the procedure does, which you should include. So it's a fantastic example of writing a procedure for this type of application. And these are some of the standards that I want you to follow when you're writing your own. Declaring your variables and uh, constants up at the very top, um, using constants instead of, uh, I had a professor describe them as magic numbers. You know, they appear out of nowhere and you don't really know what they're doing. Um, you don't have to go too crazy with replacing uh, literals or you know magic numbers or whatever with uh, constants. You don't need to replace this two with a constant, for example. You don't need to worry about that one, but like pi, you know, one that's like very, very meaningful is a good one to do. If you're, confu if you're worried about people getting confused about what this random two is doing, you can always use a comment to clarify this is the equation for the area of a circle, pi r squared. And of course, we have our three option statements, which you should be putting in every one of your, um, which you should be putting in every one of your applications. All right, so that is named constants. And with that, we've almost completely covered all the major concepts of this chapter. There's one more thing that we're going to go into, which is a brief discussion of scope, which covers parts of the apply the concepts lesson for this chapter, but well, more on that in the next video.